even though the battery seems to be fully charged when you push the power button, nothing seems to happen. It doesn't seem to be turning on. So I'm suspecting that the power button there is uh, not working. So we're going to take it apart and remove the power button and fix it. To open this, we have to flip it upside down and remove these four feet, which will reveal some screws. With the four feet off, we see that we need a T15 Torx for the four corners. And we'll remove those and then... Can... With the four Torx screws removed, we can now remove the bat bottom cover. And there's a connector in here. Actually, two connectors that go to the power supply. I guess there's an audio jack there too, so it's for that as well. And we can remove the bottom. With the bottom off, we can now pull the grill off, taking note that the front, where the speaker is, does not have the seam. The seam is on the back side. And where the seam is, there's two notches that go into the top, and on the bottom, it's a single tab, just because it can go be spun around. So take note of which way yours comes off. It might be different, but. That's the way this one comes off. Just for reference, anybody who needs to replace a battery in these, there's two screws on the back once you get to this stage. There's two screws on the back. Remove this cover. And there's your battery compartment. You can pop that battery out and replace it. Um, it seems to be in there fairly tight. We may have to pry it out. I'm not going to take this one out because it uh, seems to be lasting pretty good still. With the grill off, there are eight screws that you need to remove. Two here, two on the other side. And then when you're looking down this way, there's in the corner, there's one on every corner going this way. So eight screws total. We'll remove those and... With the eight screws removed, we can now pop the top off. It seems to be kind of clipped in place or held by something. Uh, so just lift it up and it'll pop right off. Once it's opened up, we can pop the connector off here and we have the top off. Now that we have the top cover off, we need to remove these screws and take the circuit board out so we can repair the button. Normally you would unsolder the switch. There's uh, four contacts here, but uh, I haven't got a new switch, so I'm gonna just try and clean it. And this one here, if you look closely, you can see it looks like there's a, right in here, there's a, spot where it's clipped on. So using a bent needle or pin, I'm gonna just pop this off. Now I can pop the button out and we'll We'll pop this silver part out, flip it over, and then we can clean the inside. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little bit of buildup there of dirt or something. Right in the center there, and especially in the center of that. So we'll clean that up. To clean the, the contact here, I'm just using a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip. We're just trying to get rid of that little bit of a black smudge there. Looking better already. And we'll put a dab on here too. On this part. See if I can hold that.
That looks better. And that looks better too. So now we'll just assemble it. Make sure that this this piece here is dimpled. Is like uh, you want it so that it's the center is up. Here's your plastic part of the button. And then the cover that snaps in place. We want to make sure we put this together the right way. The clips are on this side and this side, and I've got it rotated 90 degrees the wrong way. A pair of tweezers might make it a little bit easier. Once you get one side down, just push the other side down and it'll click down. And there it is, back on. Okay, so failing, failing being able to clean that, we could, uh, like I said, the best option would be to, but first option would be to, if you can buy the board, if you can buy the board, that would probably be the fastest and easiest because then you just have to unplug it and unscrew it from the plastic. Another option is look at the buttons and decide if there's a button there that you don't use very often. You have, uh, this is a power button. That's one that wore out first. And then you have your volume minus, volume plus, Bluetooth. And this is to pause your music. So pause and play the music would probably be the one that I would consider because you can do that from your phone if you've got it connected through Bluetooth. Same with the plus and the minus volume, you could do that. I wouldn't do the Bluetooth because that's one that you need for pairing. So these three would be options that you could unsolder and then resolder back on. But I decided to clean it and it seemed to work pretty good. I'll just do a test on it. Interesting fact, the keys on the buttons here, they're actually keyed. So the power button is keyed a certain way, minus, plus. So they're all keyed a certain way so that you can't put them in the wrong spot. I took a picture before I took it apart, but then when I saw they were keyed, I didn't even need it. This is like a dust cover uh, for the buttons. And you can see it still looks a little dirty there, but... There's actually a hole worn in it here. So if I if I had, I'd replace this, but I don't have. So I didn't want to scrub it too much because I didn't want to tear the, the dust cover. So put that on. And then the circuit board. And again, the circuit board only goes on a certain way as well. So put those small Phillips screws in. And then we can start assembling the speaker. Now with it all back assembled, we can test it out. There, it's powering up. Okay, done. Fixed.